everyone. Welcome back to the Cloud Show. I am not at home today. I am somewhere else. And I have lent this studio graciously by my friends at SSW down in Australia. And I am not, again, at home because I am at a conference. I am at the NDC conference in Sydney. I urge everyone to take a look at NDC conferences. They're always really good. They always have really great speakers there. And the food and everything is usually really, really nice. I have the opportunity now to lend the studio again, thanks guys, and sit down with a good friend to talk about some things related to language because I have a treat for you. I'm sitting down with no one less than Mads Torgerson. Well, hello Magnus, thanks hello. for having me here. Hello Mads, it's so good to see you. It's wonderful to have this opportunity to sit down and chat. It is. And obviously talking to you, it's going to be talk, talking about languages. So I don't know if you guys know this, um, I, if I describe Mads to someone else, I would say he's not the father of C-sharp. He didn't invent the thing. He's not the father of, of, of TypeScript either, but maybe maybe the mother, because you care for it, right? You take care of the language. Is that, is that an appropriate uh, description? I don't know. That seems a little <laughs> gendered to me. Ah, uh, well. Uh, but I'm, maternal, I, I'm his legal guardian. Legal guardian. That's okay. who I am. The yeah. legal guardian of the <laughs> languages. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Um, that's that's mostly a joke, of course, but it sets context. You take care of these languages uh, in Microsoft and evolve them and and, well, and, and C sharp. Yeah, and yeah, C sharp. Yes, yeah. yes, C sharp. Cool. So C sharp is your baby ish. Um, uh, <laughs> and. Um, what I want to talk to you about is, is you know, what's, what's in a language? What's the, why do we care which language we use and what's appropriate for different scenarios, right? Mm -hmm. Just because you have C-sharp doesn't mean that everything, you know, the C-sharp hammer, everything is a nail. No, you might need to use other things as well, right? That is true. Yeah, I mean, C-sharp tries very hard to be a general purpose language, and it is being used for a surprising number of things. Certainly, I think... Um, the uh, original inventors of C-sharp more than 20 years ago would be surprised to see all the things it's being used for yes. today and all the platforms probably. it's being used on and so on. That's probably um, true. But even so, there are definitely characteristics of C-sharp that make it more well-suited for some things and yeah. you know, other languages would do a better job elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's still a little bit of that. So if, if I'm a project manager, and I'm maybe not so technical, not necessarily, I can be, but I'm, what if I'm not super technical and, and my uh, uh, engineers, my developers are coming to me excitedly talking about which language to use for the project? How do I even approach to evaluate something like that if it's the right fit or not the right fit? Well, first of all, I think most things, to be honest, most things are the right fit. Uh -huh. Most things are good enough. Uh, ah, that's a point okay. that's been a, good point. a point that's been made at this conference also that we are you know people get very sort of in, intense about this is the best technology yeah. you know this is the best technology and most things are actually good enough yeah. I think um, there are definitely technical differences and you some, sometimes they're crucial but mostly they're not you want something if, like typically if you if you're building bigger projects that will be long running and where there's like a number of engineers involved. Yeah. Well, you want to use a technology that's stable, that has strong backing, that has like a, C sharp, that, like C sharp, but yeah. also like other things, right? Yeah. That has, that have a, um, you know, a, probably a, a great future ahead of them, yeah. and yeah. where the investment of people, you know, a you can find a bunch of people who are already experts, and continue. but the investment of people to then learn it if they don't will pay off for them as as professionals ah. as well, right? And for you, if you keep them around. Like, so, That's a really good point. So um, if it's a big investment you're making, I think you'll just want to make sure that you're not running a big risk. Like you, um, yeah. And yeah. then if you want to um, play with more exotic things or newer or smaller, yeah. you know, do it in smaller projects. And, and uh, It's interesting that yeah. that applies to languages as well. I, I didn't think about that really because uh, I have an example of something that kind of zooms out just one step from that. Because mm -hmm. there was this team that they were uh, building an app and they were setting that up uh, to run uh, in a platform somewhere. And, and then they, they came with the specs, like, here's what we did. Like, they had taken, it almost felt like they had taken great care to use all the things that were not standard. Like, they had <laughs> yeah. everything, like every tool and everything and every technology all mashed up 
And that team was, was probably excellent at managing that. But to hand that over to someone else to operate it, and then the longevity of that project. Yeah, maintain that, this. That's you know? ridiculous. <laughs> that would just never right. work. Right. And so that, that's where you standardize. That's what your point is. Like you yeah. should be uh, thinking about the longevity of things. Yeah, you definitely should. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm not here to say that you pick whatever you like. I, you know, C Sharp is just, C Sharp is great. Yeah, you, and, you would pick C Sharp. And, I would pick C Sharp. Yeah, but, but you I don't would, have to. I would pick it for most things. There are <laughs> yeah. probably things where I wouldn't. Um, mm -hmm. But I, but you know, we try our best to be that, to strike that balance of uh, being being uh, stable and reliable, yeah. Um, yeah. being a good investment for the long term, but also investing heavily in its evolution and that's sort of yeah. my part of it so that it doesn't um, gradually disappear in the rearview mirror and become yeah. like legacy that you know in 10 years time you'll need to you know there'll be fewer and fewer c-sharp developers and they will you know uh, they'll demand a high price to maintain your outdated thing because it was written in c-sharp like we want to stay a living language that yep. does the things modern developers need to do really well and, and being that a living language that should be sustainable and should hopefully attract uh, many users in many years to come, um, is, is that, I mean, that's, a, that's the great challenge, I suppose, but is, is the language going to evolve forever? Um, things will be changing, so the language will always evolve? I, you know, yes. <laughs> is a, it's, I it's, mean, it's, I, it's, there might be, look, some things can happen. Um, you know, the, there could be like a paradigm shift in the industry where there's a turn that C Sharp just can't take. Like yeah, sometimes right. there's this paradigm shift, like the cloud. It's sad though, like but, remember C Sharp yeah. once upon a time that the thing we're not using anymore. Uh, that sounds so sad. Let's say that we, <laughs> let's say that we all do quantum programming 20 yeah, years from now. Right. C Sharp can't do that and it can't be modified to do that. And most other program languages yeah. wouldn't, right? That would be one of those things, a mass extinction kind of event. Oh, sure. <laughs> um, okay. but, but, yeah. And then the other thing that can happen, of course, is that at some point it becomes too hard for us to keep evolving the language in a way where it still kind of hangs together and sure. feels consistent. Sure. That point is something that I think we would all have thought we re had reached long ago, <laughs> but we're but still not there. Still, still adding somehow new features. it still really works out, and people are still really happy with yeah. the way that we integrate uh, new features into the existing fabric. And so, even though. I keep worrying that that point will happen because then I'll have to find a new job and not, you know, it just seems to not happen. We're trying to be just really careful that we don't break anything, that we don't like make big mistakes. Mm. We're trying to be really thoughtful about what we add, but then still being really eager to, once we've established that this is going to be a good solid thing yeah. to actually do it and not be too cautious and not kind of fall off the, fall off the wagon. So, uh, I, I, maybe contentious question, but uh, potentially, let's, let's, let's check. I'm going to give you an option, though. Uh, option to add anything to the language right now that you wish you, you, wish you had, uh, be able, just be able to add, or maybe just remove something that, is, that you feel is in your way. I wish, I, I wish we hadn't done that. Like, pick something. Okay, well, <laughs> um, I think I'll pick one of the latter. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, things I wish we hadn't done mm -hmm. um, in hindsight. Sure, because um, you don't know where we're going exactly. I don't think there are things that are completely terrible, but you know, I could go all the way back to C Sharp 1 and say, I wish we had added proper function types instead of those weird, uh, instead of, this is very technical, instead yeah. of weird uh, delegate types that are mm -hmm. like some combination of function types, but they're also, collection types? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you know you can add two delegates and then you call it and then you call two functions? And, you know, weird stuff like yeah. that. So they're kind of things I would want to go back and clean up. Oh, okay. Um, but now I, you kind of, it's, it's hard to remove things and after the fact. The thing is, yeah, you, you can't remove them. You could always say, oh, here's something better, right? Mm -hmm. here's, here's the new and better function type. Mm -hmm. But every time you do that, when you have a, we have a massive ecosystem, of right? We have our own like big frameworks of 20 years that, that kind of yeah. go along with .NET. And then there's everybody who built things around it. If you say, oh, that thing that you have, you know, 100 million lines of code already using, you should use this instead. Uh, like who does that help? No, so, no, it doesn't help. 
So there are some limitations. That's too hard. Yes, yeah. of course. OK, cool. Well, we want to keep these, uh, these videos short and snappy, and, and I don't want to take up too much of your time. And so I have to be mindful about everyone here, and we're going to go back to the conference now. But it was lovely talking to you today. Uh, Mads, thank you for being on The Cloud Show. Thanks for the opportunity. This was fun. Thank you, Magnus.